My name is Patrick Keogh and I'm the Director of Distance Learning at Carteret Community College. Today we're going to talk a little bit about podcasting. You know, we've heard a lot of buzz about podcasting and this video is going to kind of demystify or take the mystery out of instructional podcasting. Now the first thing we want to be aware of is essentially what is podcasting and why is it uh, a viable uh, option for our online courses and our hybrids, even our web enhanced courses. So the thing we want to remember about podcasting is, to me as an instructor, I teach a lot of different courses online, it supplements my instruction. Not only does it supplement my instruction as far as giving my students another option to hear the material. Not only to read it, but to hear it and to also I believe it gives my course a human touch so they can relate to their instructor not only through text but through audio as well. Now uh, at Carter Community College uh, we have recently become a uh, iTunes University College and we're trying to get more and more instructors to get involved with podcasting. Essentially there's a couple of different ways you can do it. You can do it in a a very controlled environment with a script in your office and do a course orientation or a lecture or uh, the option that I choose to use is to keep an iPod with me in my pocket when I do my lectures for my photography courses and my art history. I literally will digitize my lecture, put it into a program, an open source program called Audacity, then I edit it and I upload it to iTunes University here at our college for my students to download onto their MP3 players or literally listen, it, listen to it uh, on their computer, at home, uh, wherever they have access to uh, a computer or a laptop. Now, you don't have to have an iPod to do podcasting. Let's get that off the table any mp3 player will do. Podcasting is not difficult. It is a relatively easy technology to learn and to apply and incorporate into your classes. You're going to hear from some faculty who are using podcasting in their classrooms and the neat thing about podcasting is you can use it for any type of course. We have boat builders, English teachers, interior design instructors, astronomy instructors, photography, all kinds of instructional topics can be uh, incorporated and uh, applied in this technology. So uh, as far as best practices, I think one of the key things about podcasting is to come up with a standardized system. And that's what this presentation and our web blog is going to offer as far as two other colleges a, a whole set of best practices and some standard operational procedures for podcasting. Everything from uh, adding metadata to your files, everything from how to upload it into your course. You don't need iTunes University. You can create an MP3 or in the case of an enhanced podcast, an MP4 and upload it directly into Blackboard or if you're using Moodle you can do the same thing there. So it doesn't have to be uh, put into iTunes University. If you have a server you can literally just upload what we call FTP your MP3 or MP4 directly into um, onto a server and students can you can link to it and students can listen to it that way. So there are many ways to, uh, to uh, use podcasting and to get uh, your students access to your podcasts. We're going to try to give you a variety of ways uh, that will help you as far as move forward with this technology. We're also going to give you at the end of this program uh, some uh, contacts and resources that you can use uh, that will help you move forward as far as uh, with this technology and trying to incorporate it at your school.
I started podcasting during the Blackboard uh, boot camp. Learned all about it in Patrick Keogh and uh, Priya Hill's course and really got into it, started recording a lot of my lectures after that. Um, what I would do is uh, I, I tried three different recorders to see which one worked the best. And of course the uh, iPod with the microphone went out competition, hands down. So I would take that into class every day and record each lecture, bring it back, put it into the Audacity program, edit out all the uh, pauses and the ums and ahs and the little personal conversations that we had at the first of the class, things like that, and then just upload it right to iTunes. It's really simple to do. And once, you, once, you, once I've done it a couple of times, it was real simple to do, and I ended up doing it with every class. And uh, I have had students talk about it. They have downloaded them and they've used them and we joke that uh, if they've already been to the class it's a good way to go to sleep you can just <laughs> uh, listen to it again. Um, I believe that podcasting has been a great help to my students it's a real benefit it engages all different types of learners you can engage your audio learners your kinetic learners and your visual learners also it also is a benefit to me because it frees up some of the class time rather than repeat a position or uh, demonstration over and over again in class, I can have them watch it over and over again on the video. So it gives us more time to go over other um, things. It's very helpful to the students and myself um, when they miss a class for different reasons, then they can actually go in and listen to the whole lecture instead of just getting someone's note. And a lot of them seem to be more auditory uh, and visual learners than they are necessarily written. Well, I also found it helpful that when you go um, through the iTunes University that I can see what other professors are doing with the um, podcast and a lot of times there's already wonderful information there for me to use so it's great it's it's an excellent tool um, I think podcasts are really good for the students these days um, it's really educational and it works for especially well with kids that want to uh, come in and sit down and just listen to um, some lectures that, that had, they had missed previously. Um, it's good for people that can't make it in during the lectures. They can just sit back and relax and listen to it on the computer. Um, and even if you wanted a refresher course, I think podcasts are good for people who just want to jump into something and they can listen to these podcasts and get a refresher on any type of subject, well, really. They reinforce the lecture that we get in the class. And it also helps if you miss parts of it for people asking questions or other people in the background talking. You get to hear everything the instructor says. Um, I've listened to the ones when I took the lighting class. They were very beneficial, helped me understand more so than just the lecture itself and seeing it, just hearing it again and I could take better notes. Um, I've also listened to some of the other ones from some of the other photo classes which helped me to understand a little bit more when more so than when I took the class and there wasn't any podcast, I could go back and refresh myself on some of the things that I've learned. Summer. Well, I, I found that the digital imaging class with Photoshop was very, very detailed. There were a lot of procedures. Uh, to take it all in in one class period was rather difficult because there was, there was so much as far as detail goes. I could refer back to it and almost use it as a reference and go through the whole procedure and use that to reinforce what was done in class. So I found it extremely helpful. There's another very important aspect of podcasting uh, that I think we need to address. And that is how using digital audio, and sometimes uh, if you use a, a video podcast, uh, you are tapping into a variety of learning styles uh, in your online and hybrid courses. Because there are students that will get a lot more out of the audio lecture than they might get out of the text-based lecture. So I think one of the real important aspects of podcasting is not only are you tapping into a variety of learning styles in your courses, but it is a mobile technology. Students can download those podcasts to their MP3 players, their iPods, and they can take them anywhere, listen to them at their convenience, and then be prepared for tests or any type of material discussions that you're using in your online courses.